100.3 WRMP is the Quincy Harris Morning Show with K Fox and your station for 50 minutes of non-stop music. Uh, this guy right here, legend, Murder Inc. Yes. Uh, reality TV before reality TV was yes. reality TV. Yes. Um, he's he's built stars from yes. ground zero. Yes. Uh, he hails from Queens, New York. I think it's Queens, hashtag right? Queens get the money. Queens get the money. Let's give it up for the legendary Irv Gotti. He's here. Let's give it up for Irv Gotti. Come on, man. Let's give it up for Irv Gotti. Yes, uh, yes, yes. Uh, Irv, how you doing, man? I am blessed. First, I want before we even get into tales, BT. We're, like it seems like you were doing your thing. You're right. always doing your thing, right. and then you dipped off. And when people dip off like you, you always getting some other kind of money. So, what other kind of money were you you were getting? Because I know you were getting something else. I was getting poker money. Really? Yeah. Really? I was you, getting a lot of poker money. You were a poker player? Yeah. So did you go in there with the glasses on? Nah, I don't need the glasses. Really? So you just know how to read situations and people? I, I, I'm I a winning poker player. Really? What's the most you ever won playing poker? In one session? Yeah. Like like $270. $270. That's cool. $270,000. Like, $270 is cool, Irv, because like, that's, that's enough to pay the cable bill. <laughs> Um, what else can you pay with the two two hundred seventy dollars? Two hundred seventy thousand. You you made two hundred seventy thousand dollars in one session. session. Yeah, I won a hundred. I won six figures a bunch of times. Really? Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, well, clearly. Hold them, PLO. How how did you get into the world of poker? I I the one thing my dad and my family taught my dad he taught us it was sports like bowling and yeah. ping pong and gambling really? yeah so like since i was like five years old i, I would play poker when was the uh, the last poker game you you've been in uh i would just played the world series of poker main event really yeah i, I lost what's gonna mean you win some you you lose, you lose yeah some. i lost i like playing it though it's very entertaining it's like i like the whole poker thing and matching wits and bluffing yeah. and when you could bluff and when you can't bluff and things like that i enjoy it Wow, I, I never knew so that. So I took my sabbatical yeah, yeah, okay. from the music business. Yeah. I was playing poker, but I was also plotting. Okay. Also, you got to interject with guys like me. When you don't see guys like me for a minute, we we plotting. I already know. Right. So everything that you're seeing now was stuff that I thought about probably 10 years ago. Now, I saw a, a relationship um, that you had, and you probably still have, because we're going, we're going, you're going to reintroduce me to this guy, mm -hmm. uh, Chris Abrego. My guy. Now, if you guys don't know who Chris Abrego, like, I'm... You should get with Chris Abrego. Bruh. You're multimedia, and he'll expand it with Endemol Shine, yes. and they're billions of dollars. So let me tell you <laughs> who Chris, Chris Abrego is. Chris Abrego... Um, he had this company called 51 Minds. He's a television producer. He yes. produced a lot of TV for VH1, uh, Flavor of all Love. All the Of Love franchise. All the Of, of Loves uh, back in the day. Yeah. And then he became the president in the U.S. of he Endemol. He sold 51 Minds 50, for about $209 million. million dollars. And yes. then he, after that, became the president and chairman of Endemol Shine, which is about a $16 billion entertainment company. Yeah, see... Here's the deal. He's my brother. This is why we're getting in on film. We need. I need that that intro because I'm gonna tell you. I met Chris back in when I was in L. A. Right. And He's he was a good still guy. doing. Yeah, he was doing 51 Miles and Mexican. he just sold it. Hard worker. It's my guy. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I need that reintroduction. This is a different kind of in interview, guys. Y'all think it's a boss. We'll, we'll get to that other stuff. <laughs> we we, we got to get way. But y'all, he should, you should yeah. connect with him. He's a great guy, uh, and he could probably think of different ways to expand your brand. Yes. Okay, and you're gonna help out with that. Thank you. You're welcome. I appreciate it. <laughs> now let's talk to business. Let's talk about business. We, you're here because you're doing a show on BET. Yes, I'm Tales. doing. A, I'm doing a show on BET called Tales, where I take hip hop songs, turn them into one hour to two hour movies, uh, and it's been going really well. Yeah, and it's growing and growing and growing. And you know, I'm just happy people are enjoying the, the creation of Tales, and yeah. it seems like they're really enjoying it. Are we going to see? Now, are you getting, you know, since season one of Tales, are you getting more people hitting you with like, yo, you should do this? Yeah, yeah, all you day. I song. get that every day now. Right. You should do this song. You should do this song. You should do this song. Do you have to clear it with the artist? Yeah, or the... yeah, we pay them. We okay. pay them for the record and everything. We clear it, everything for the right to use it. Do you want to hear my idea now or should yeah, I tell you later? Yeah, shoot. Okay. Shoot, which song? What's the song? It was a song by Jay-Z. 
Uh, it was on meet, Blueprint meet 3. Meet the Parents. Nah, it's not even Meet the Parents. It was one where he talked about how the life of a soldier and the life of a dude on the streets mm. parallel. Ooh, I'll play it for you. That's dope. Dude, I saw it as a movie in like 2000. What's the name of the song? I'll find it for you. I will find it. You know, but with Jay, he has so many. Yeah, but I'm telling you, this one is like literally comparing. You know, you know what song I want to do with Jay? What, what's one? Reasonable Doubt, The Evils. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, when he talks about coming up with his dude and then he, he had turned him, kidnapping his baby. Baby mama, mama feeding it the 20s. so visual. Yeah. Like with two friends who come up and then one turns and does some things and yeah. now they're beefing. I like The Evils. Yeah. Would you ever do it? I mean, have you done season that's one? That song, no, that you're saying, well, I need the name of it. Because that's get, a dope topic. No, dude, I'm going to get the name the of it. parallel between a, a soldier yes. and someone in the street. Yeah, and they like they all, they all went, they graduated, one went to this the way, army, one went, went to the streets. Yeah. And then you seeing how they both fighting for East yeah, Block. Yeah, that's dope. That's definitely a dope concept. Guys, y'all think I'm playing. <laughs> I'm not, bro, I'm not here. <laughs> for a long time, I'm here for a good time. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. The marathon. He's yes. a marathon guy. He's not a sprinter. Yes. He's a marathon. marathon. Yeah. Let's go back. I remember you were doing reality TV before everybody. You know, some people say Gotti's Way was the vision for Love and Hip Hop because it was the first time, like, a guy like myself opened up the cameras to my wife, mm. my kids, and showed that aspect, which is Love and Hip Hop. So a lot of people do give me credit that Mona Scott took my show and just created a franchise. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you said you you were showing, you weren't living in the house, you were living in the house. Yeah. I remember one... Co-parenting. Co-parenting. Mm -hmm. I like that. Well, yeah. I don't like that. I'm married. Uh, I don't like that wife. I'm sorry. <laughs> I love my wife. We got two yeah, kids. Yeah, but if things one on don't the work way. out, you still... Yes. You still have children. Yeah. And you still... You and... Yeah, your partner should still be able to come together. Because at one time, y'all did love each other, right? Yeah. So y'all should be able to come together and raise these beautiful kids that y'all made. Yeah, and I'm a, me and Deb. I'm going I'm to clarify that. I do love my wife still because I, I agree with, with him and I don't need somebody to take this out of context. Um, how's the relationship with you and Deb now? Me and Deb is great. You yeah. know, we was, uh, we was shooting. We were shooting yesterday, filming, and we was talking about... <laughs> The shaky hand. The shaky hand? Yes. The shaky hand. The shaky hand. You ever see Goodfellas? Yes. All right. So you see when Karen and had the gun on, he woke up. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that yeah. happened to me with that, like, two times. She pulled a gun on you? And it's the shaky hand. Which is even more scary. Because you never, she's and really out of her mind. and shaky him. How did you do this to me? So it's a, it was funny. Well, it's not funny. But, yeah. you know, we was like, it was like you and Deb because we're so cool now. Yeah. And we, we, we raised three beautiful kids. So they're like, you know, y'all should get back together. Ja, ja was like, yo, I see bliss ending with you two. <laughs> and I, I just reminded him about the shaky hand. Yeah. And then he was like, maybe not, maybe not. Because I said, yo, I ain't going back to Deb. It's good how it is. I go back to Deb, she going to shoot. She going to squeeze. Yeah, because it ain't got Now it's just pap. It ain't, it ain't going to be shaky not knowing. It's going to yeah. be a, a steady hand, yeah. and you're going to get shot. Yeah, I don't want <laughs> Man, you, listen, Irv, that's, I didn't know that. I'm never yeah. wanting to see the shaky hand from my wife, yo, bro. Deb, Deb has a nickname. Prem used to call it Deb Murder. Prem used to be joke around. He's like, man, Deb, you, she, yeah, man, she can hold down the block. She yeah. would have the block and tip top, you know what I'm saying? And he actually nicknamed the Deb Murder. Wow. Have you, Preem, you, you brought Preem up, Supreme. Yeah, my brother. Yeah, is he, have, have you talked to him? How, you know? I, yes, I speak to him. Uh, I went and seen him. You know, okay. he's still in my life. Yeah. He's still in my life, even though he's, you know, locked away. He's still a part of the thing. You know, the funny, well, not the funny thing. I keep saying funny thing, and this shit ain't funny. Well, yeah. you know, the, the crazy thing is, like, when he was thinking, they was wanted to give him the death penalty. Mm -hmm. And he didn't. He didn't really care. He was like, "So uh, either way," and I was like, "Nah, but you know, we, we can still talk." He said, "Even if you're in jail, we can still talk. Uh, we can still, you can still be a part of what I'm doing just from the inside." Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And he's like my biggest supporter. Whenever something, you know, he's the first. Yo, kill him, man. Yo, yo, and like just. It's, and it's, it's weird because he's all his spirits is always upbeat. And he's in jail for the rest of his life. Yeah. But his spirits is always with me. It's upbeat. It's always he wants me to win. And, like, when you win, he's like, I feel like I'm winning too. So keep winning. And he's very inspirational for me. 
Are we going to get the uh, the Herb Gotti story? I mean, because you've been through you've been through a lot. No, you're getting a you're getting a documentary. I okay. have a deal with Live Nation, so you're getting a documentary, probably a three or four part, one hour thing. Uh, it's a good story with that too. It's this guy Michael Payton who did an unauthorized doc. It's on YouTube. Okay. And I didn't know this guy, and people on my Instagram was like, "Yo, you need to check out your doc." I'm like, "What are y'all talking about?" They said it's an unauthorized doc. On YouTube, and y'all can go check it out if you think. Just put unauthorized Irv Gotti, yeah. right? And I watched it. It was about forty minutes, and it was brilliant. So I I, I went on Instagram. I said, "Find me the guy that made this." Yeah. So they was like, at first it was funny because they was like, "Yo, don't tell Gotti he's gonna sue him," right? And I was like, "No, I'm not. I'm not gonna sue him. I'm gonna put him on." Yeah. And so I found out his name. They got his contact me. He hit me. His name is Michael Payton, and Michael Payton is the director, writer, producer of the official doc with Live Nation. That was brilliant of him. He put it out, and then he, yeah, he got your out, attention. He caught my attention. I thought it was dope, and I said, do the real one. And now he's getting a nice check, and he's doing the thing. It's a good story. And he's dope. He's like in NYU okay. uh, film school, which is even more funnier. He got a scholarship with Jay-Z's. Uh, uh, S. Carter Foundation. Nice. Jay Z put him through college. His foundation is the money that put him through college, and now he's working with me. Like it's amazing. His that the whole story is really is really a dope story. Wow. Yeah. I'm like, I gotta do some unauthorized things on you. Yeah. I'm looking at six figure jail. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna like, do some unauthorized yeah, things. Look, some, but then also, yeah, I'm doing the TV series. So. So it's really a setup. It's the tour first. We're going to do the murdering tour with Live Nation. It'll mm-hmm. probably be the end of this year going into next year. Uh, then we have the documentary, which is going to be amazing and tell things. And then we're going to do a TV series, which now through, through someone playing me and playing John, playing everybody, you're going to see exactly what happened. Yeah. And it's a lot of stuff that people don't know that happened. It's yeah. a lot of discoveries, and I'm telling you, I'm going to ruffle some feathers, Okay. And I'm, but I'm going to tell my story. Can you give us one feather ruffling situation? You want a, a feather ruffling? Just, just give us something. Well, we've talked about a lot. Just, just give, yeah, give him a, yeah. I can't, I you can't. can't. Ah, he was about so to. so juicy. Yeah, I was okay. about to because I'm crazy. It. I saw it. I guess it was crazy. Uh, you know. let, me, I'm a, let me tell you this. It's right? a lot of good stuff, though. Really? A lot of good stuff that people is going to be like, oh, yo. Yeah. And after they see it, they're going to be in the office or in the rent. Y'all going to be talking about it crazy. All right. We got and I'm some. like, that's what I, yo. Yeah. This is a, another thing, right? I'm, I got to go back to the reality I was about show. to give you a. Fuck. I know. Come on. Hold up. I was hold about up. Go to back, give you a mind Come on. Give me, yeah. give, come on, give me it's just a little bit. Come on. Don't. You know, I was with the feds. Actually, 6 a.m., and I'm getting phone call after phone call. They're at the office. They're at my house. Which Deb kicked me out of. Oh. Or else they would have caught they would have got me right there. They didn't know I had an apartment in Tribeca. I was with someone when all of this happened, and I'll just say that. Okay. Leave it at that. He was with a, a person that we know. He was with a female that we know. Her name, she's a she's a singer. Look at this guy. I didn't say that. She's a, she's a singer. Blink, I didn't say none of that. Uh, blink, blink twice. She's a singer. She's a singer. She's known for, she was in a group. Mm-mm. She was not in, she was a solo artist. Mm-hmm. Oh my goodness. He was with Anita Baker at the time. <laughs> you got me. You it got was me and Anita. Anita Baker. And I was caught up in the rapture, in the rapture of, of love. love. Yes. Yes. You like got it, it pinned. We're, and right there, when yeah. I when Anita seen those calls, yeah. I knew Anita was running for the hills. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can't wait to get this. Listen, I can talk to Herb all day. <laughs> That's told, motherfucker Anita. <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I, told, I told Herb this. I, I met Herb. My first radio interview in 1998, uh, I, I was filling in for somebody, and you came down with uh, Ja Rule, uh, Black Tie, um, what's my man, Cadillac? Cadillac, Cadillac Tie. Black Child. Black, Black Child. 
Charlie Baltimore. Charlie B. I was so nervous. This was my first interview. You ain't on the nervous radio no ever. more. Oh no, it's over here. Let me get a hundred thousand. Yeah, I told you I just said that. I said we were on TV. I was like, yo, or we. Let me get a hundred stacks because I know you have it. Or you have investors that give me the money. Um, yo, let me go back. Let me go back though. There yeah. was there was one thing on that reality show I'll never forget. You and Deb were talking, right? right? And you said, and I never forget this because I'm going through this now, right? I'll help you. I'll counsel you. Okay. Go. I have two kids, three kids, uh, three kids in a month. My wife is eight months, nine months pregnant. Congratulations. Thank you. Thirty-eight days. Kids is beautiful. Yes, they are. Through another boy, three boys. I got three boys. You want a girl? I did, but we're stopping. It's 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 over. It's over. All right, go for the girl. Go for four. Give me that hundred thousand. I go for four. <laughs> okay? You have no idea what it took me to get this energy to be right here you with know, you right now. You know, you treat your boys different than girls. Yes. If you have a girl, it's like, it's like Angie. I, I, I know, she'll never hear no. Yeah. Never. Yeah. My boys, I'm hard on them because oh. they're men. You gotta be a man. You gotta do this. And you gotta do that. And yeah. stand up and everything like that. Angie, it's whatever. Yeah, I coach my son's basketball team. I put him on the bench yesterday. I'm like, dude, come on, come on out. Oh, you the father coach? Oh yeah, dude, come on, come on out, bro. Oh, you I gotta sit down. Stories with that. Oh, I'm on. I'm and grinding. They, they like mind. AU circuit, everything. He's eight, so he's okay. eight. It's the first time. AU playing. circuit is is intense. I can only imagine a, a, a nice travel team. Yo, I remember my son Sonny was in there. I'm the only dad, and it was in Philly. We was playing somewhere by Villanova. Okay. And you know you Philly guys is volatile, to yes. say the say thing. So we're playing, and the game is now nah, it's getting rough. And, and this Philly, he slammed our center, Masheed. Yeah. Slammed him, like total, like flagrant. So I jumped up. It was just me. I jumped up. I said, Joe, you on that ball? What the thing, thing. It's just me. And Every all of the Philly, guys. he said, "That's my son. That's my son." I said, "Your son is a piece of the yeah, thing." Right? Yeah, yeah. So he slammed him. That ain't thing. So we beefing. They come down now. I'm looking around. It's just me, and I swear to God, like my son and his team is looking at me, yeah. like, "Yo, your dad is it's wild. Is 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 ill right now?" Because I took on. It was like twenty of them. Yeah. And I said, "You know what? I'm gonna place my bet." I said it's because they was looking like they was gonna come touchy touchy. Yeah. Right. And I was like. I'm placing my bet. And I said, y'all do what y'all want, but I'm going to come back here. Yeah. And I'm going to burn this mother. <laughs> I hit it with, I hit yeah. it with the Denzel. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, yo, they, they looked at me, and I said, y'all know me, right? And they was looking at me, and, yo, I backed them down. Yeah. My son was like, yo, Dad. It gets crazy. Yeah, they, he was like, Dad. They was gonna beat you. I said, yeah. And I got. I was gonna come back. See, and that's what I'm saying. Like, I got when I'm when I'm coaching, I forget. About all of this, radio, TV. I'm yo, book, get out. You down? Like it's crazy. I'm talking to the refs. Crazy. Eight year olds. It's a eight. It's you're intense. Very. I'm Bobby Knight. I'm you're throwing Bobby stuff. Knight, you're throwing everything. You get a technical? You not yet. Tech? Not yet. Not yet. Oh, you gotta get a tag. Because the refs, they you gotta they, get a tag. Come on. No, let me you. Tell you. It was just one. I coached. <laughs> I coached them for like two games. Yeah. I they they almost kicked me out. I almost got tossed. I definitely got attacked. Yeah. You know, and I was saying, Joe, this is the thing. I, I, like, I'm getting attacked. I'm you got to get attacked. But I'm managing expectations because I got parents. They want to make sure that the kids can play. I'm managing, oh, Q on Yo, TV it gets the team. It'll get the eight-year-olds motivated right. if you get a good technical get a foul. All right, I'm going to throw a chair. Here's my question, though. Then you got to turn it around to get a tech and say, yo, if y'all don't have my back, yeah. and go out, they, it's going to inspire them. Okay. I did that. I'll get kicked out again. I did that. You. No, you ain't got to get kicked out. Yeah. You got to get a tech, and then maybe close to a, another tech. But don't okay. get kicked out. Okay. The eight-year-olds, who's... Yeah, who's going yeah. <laughs> to... I get take, it. Who's taking over? Yeah. Well, we got Chris, though, but I get it. My question was this. I watched a reality show, and I never... What year was that reality? What, what it was year was like... Oh seven. Okay, I never forget this. There was one scene um, that you were trying to balance family and your life, right? Mm -hmm. Your your business life, and you said, "Yo, I'm always going." It was something. To, I'm paraphrasing, but I'm always going to uh, be in this game. I'm always going to have to like prove myself to my peers. Like right. it was something to that effect. Do you regret anything that you've done? No. Well, your business. Versus family, like how balancing. I regret a few moves. I, you know, I regret 
trying to sign Nas after I did Super Ugly. I definitely, mm. and I love Nas. Nas is my bro, but I Jay is my brother. I've yeah. known Jay since I was 17. I shouldn't have did that. I regret I said some things in the magazine with J-Lo when she was like my best friend, and I was high and stupid, and I said dumb things, yeah. and I regret that. But other than that, like the major things in my life, I don't regret my friendship with Preen, which brought on the feds and brought on, and I understand that's why they came after me. But I don't regret that. Preem is my brother. I love that guy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I don't regret that. I don't regret anything. And I also feel like even the whole spectrum of my life is, is taught me things to now to bring me to this person, which is to date the best version of me. Okay. So, you know what I'm saying? I don't really regret a lot. I'm, I look at it as lessons and okay. lessons learned. But you know, to your point with there, you you know, when you have a family, like you have a family, you know, but you're different. You it's this is like the radio and the T V, the multimedia mogul that you are. I'm trying. Right. But it's like a nine to five. Yeah. It's a set schedule, you go home. So jobs like that and work like that is more indicative of building families. You know, I always say like if I had, if I was a construction worker, me and Dad would probably be together. Yeah. We would fight and everything. Because then when you fight, here, here's the problem. Mm. When you fight, you still going home. You got to wake up. You got a schedule. So even if you get into an argument with your wife, you're going to be there. The kids is going to be running around a, a hours, maybe a day, depending on how volatile you are. You know, look at her, you know, I love her. And, and, then, and then you're back. You're yeah. back good. The problem with the, the business that I'm in, you know, you have that fight. I got to be in Miami tomorrow. There's a lot of fat asses in Miami. <laughs> We're going to have a problem. I don't even like you right now, Dad. Yeah. Yeah. Shorty, what's up? You know what I'm saying? And it, it's going to breed that. I'm not saying that I'm right. I know all the women's out there. You, you dog. I'm just keeping it real. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm not saying that I'm right. I'm not condoning it. But that's what happens in this business. Yeah. You're more inclined to stay married if you have a regular job. But I'm gonna be real with you. I'm trying to get out of this. I'm yeah, like, but you this, still, I yeah. understand. You know what I'm saying? Like, like your goal is like maybe be like Steve Harvey, Steve right? or Byron Allen. Byron Allen. You know what right? I mean? But it, when you say them, they're not traveling. They're yeah. set in one location. They're just making a lot more money yeah. doing this. But you still, it's still a set thing. Got you. So it's the entertainment business. But you're in the entertainment business where, yo, I got I to gotta do TV from 11 to 2. I got to do radio from 3 to thing, and then yeah, I yeah. can go home. I'm tired. I need some sleep or whatever like that, and it's a set thing. Yeah. You're not all over the place like how I was with Murder Ring. Got you. That, yeah. breeds, that breeds divorce. Got it. And, and, you know, I want to find another wife. I'm jealous when I hear stories like Whoa. that. I would love to find another, like, a, a wife. But... Don't ever get divorced. Oh, no. I have no prenup. No, we. this is it. Divorce is hell. Talk about it. Because a lot of people are like, I'm free now. Uh, nah, I'm, nah, I'm, nah, I'm swagging. Nah. Now, when, you have, when you have money or you built up some capital, you do not. I repeat, divorce is hell. And when you get divorced, it hits you like this was never about love. We signed a partnership agreement for this corporation called the Lorenzo family or yeah, whatever. Yeah. And you see, like, you, you're you in there and you're in the room. It's funny because <laughs> I had it with Nick Cannon. Nick Cannon is another multimedia guy, right? And he's very smart, yeah. super smart. And I was sitting there talking and we gave the same story because you're in a thing with a, you have your lawyer, she has her lawyer, and the lawyers is fighting to, to take your money. Mm. And like with me, I have to pay her lawyer. Man. You got to pay to almost lose. You got to pay her lawyer. You got to spend the money, pay for her lawyer to take your money. Yeah, no, we're going to stay together forever. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm in it, bro. <laughs> no, but that's yeah. good. You need to because I, that's why anytime I'm in a relationship, when I see it go a little left, bye. Because it just puts in my mind divorce. I'm going to be in that room with you. Mm. So now you, you're scarred. I am totally scarred. And, and honestly, if I do get married, it's definitely a prenup. You ever see Intolerable Cruelty? No. With George Clooney, that's the best movie on divorces. Really? Yeah, and George Clooney plays a divorce lawyer, Catherine Zeta-Jones. 
plays like the woman who just gets all of the rich men and take, goes to take their money. Yeah. It's classic comedy. It's so it's so funny. Yeah. But he had this thing called the Massey prenup, and it was like it was impenetrable or whatever. You you you're not getting his money if you sign the Massey prenup. I'm gonna have a Massey prenup for my next wife. Got you, man. Maybe we do a reality show. You get the Massey prenup, and then we we off to the sunset. We gotta talk, Irv. What happened? What the hell happened last night? With you and Irv Gotti, I mean you and Ja Rule getting in this club. All right, first was of it all, a fight? Was listen, it slap boxing? First what of all, on? first of all, don't don't believe Lucifer. Who is Lucifer? Fifty Cent. Curtis. Okay. Never believe Lucifer. The devil's the king of lies. Okay. So Lucifer perpetuates lies. Okay. Okay. He he perpetuated. We was we couldn't get in SOBs. I haven't got turned away from a club in at least twenty years. Yeah. Right. So that had nothing to do with it. We were shooting a reality show. Last night? Yes. So what we saw was... We were shooting Growing Up Hip Hop. Got okay? it. Okay. And the producers of Growing Up Hip Hop did a bad thing. That is now, I don't want to be on Growing Up Hip Hop no longer. I started off the series of Growing Up Hip Hop. I, have, I had, great friend, had great friends in Datari Turner, Tara Long. Even one of the producers, Jennifer Gardner, uh, Kim Osario, they used to be my good friends. And I explained to them, yo, I'm doing great. I got millions of dollars. Like, I'm doing great. Yeah. I don't want to come on a show with my children and y'all perpetuate beef, made up beef. I said, my kids is like the sweetest kids. They would never beef with anybody. They're the nicest human beings. They really are. They are the nicest kids. They don't, and they're rich. They 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 have jobs. They they on the yellow brick road of success. There's nothing. They don't want to beef with nobody. So early on in the season, they pitted Angie and started some beef. I I immediately checked them. I said we'll stop doing the show. And I was like, I don't want to. That's not what my family's about. I don't want to be beefing, and I don't care about a reality show that I need money without beef so I know that's ratings so I explained to him crystal clear for like two hours don't do this with my kids yeah. so last night what you seen was we had a great season finale party my kids is there we're performing on stage at SOB's the crowd is loving it, Ja's sons perform he wants to be a rapper, my man MXV Center Charlie Baltimore's daughter's there, Sienna, she's DJing. DJing it's yeah. a fan, it's, it's, it's everything what grown up hip hop's supposed to be, but super positive. Ja jumps on stage with Charlie, they perform down ass bitch. We get off stage, everyone is smiling, happy, loving. I'm over there in the VIP section. They throw some girl on stage, I don't know who she is. And I don't say that to disrespect her or whatever. I honestly, I don't know who she is. Yeah. She gets on stage right after we leave, and starts disrespecting Charlie, me, and John. Causing, yo, causing that frenzy. Really? Yeah. So now I'm I'm walking and trying to see this girl who's, who's dissing us. To, like, I don't even know you. But what's up? Y'all want to get active? Let's get active. Or whatever. I'm on 10, which I told them. Don't do this because me and Jai ain't really like, like, we're great guys, but it, yo, if you spit in our face, we gonna spit back. Yeah. We're not the type, oh my God, I'm sorry. No, we're gonna, we're gonna get volatile. So the camera now, as they wanna film me. Boom. I snuff the camera, the camera hits the guy in the face. He's fucking dazed. Security comes over, grabs me, and now it's the situation crazy thing when security comes over and grabs me the girl who I didn't know on the stage that was dissing us is running out the door because she's running scared Yeah. and she looks at me I'm sorry they made me do it I'm sorry they made me do it so it was a setup, of course it's a setup. that's why when you hear me I'm like yo y'all set me up I told y'all don't do this so security's there and now it's a melee and then now when they touch Ja I get extra volatile you ain't it, I'm super protective of Ja. I just am. If, yeah. if 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 you if you touch Ja, kill me. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm I'm coming. <laughs> so I'm like, don't put your hands on Ja. And security, truth be told, 
they didn't want no, they didn't want no smoke with us, cause they knew me, they know of me, they know of New York, whatever. So they was like, yo, and we it was just a, yada, a lot of yelling, but they didn't want that smoke, yeah, at so all. This was all a setup. Last it was night. all a setup, and now I don't want to be on growing up hip hop no more. So, so who do you, have you had a conversation with the producers or the creators? I, I've had a conversation with the head of AMC Networks, who's the boss of We TV. I had I. The top, what they don't realize is the top guy is my friend. And I, I told him his name is Josh Saban. I said, Josh, I'm doing your show. I told these producers don't do that. And I said, they put me and my children in jeopardy, Josh. Josh is like the coolest white guy, old guy. But me and him, they don't know. Me and him is like this. Yeah. We, we, we have a real relationship. I've known him for like four years. So I'm like, Josh, why would they do that? And he's like, yo, I'm going to call him and see what's up. But I said, Josh, I don't want to be, take me out of the show. Again, let me let me say it again. I, I'm i good. The, the little money that they give me, that little reality money, I do not need it. I swear to you, I don't. I don't need it. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to risk my whole life, my, my children's life for growing up hip-hop because y'all wouldn't just listen to me. We gave y'all, and I'm giving y'all a great show. I'm giving y'all a great show. Being here, talking, giving you all the beats that you want. But they was so, they so we need the drama. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So now they got it. Next on Growing Hip Hop, New York. Yo, get that camera, boom, and yeah. I snuffed the cameraman. That's going to be the, the, the clip, yeah. but it's not. Where they messed up is, yo, Josh, don't do that. And I'm telling Josh, I'm like, yo, I'm friends with guys like you. I'm friends with Bob Backus, the chairman. You know, Leo Cohen runs Google and YouTube. I have multiple, Michael Rapino, who runs Live Nation. These are all my friends. I said, I don't want them seeing me when I'm in savage mode. Yeah. You understand? Totally. They may be like, wait a minute, can we give this guy $100 million? He's a fucking thug or whatever. You understand? So I'm like, on so many levels, I'm like, yo... That's not what I'm doing. And it's not what I'm about. It's not what I signed up for. I told y'all don't do this. I had a verbal agreement with you guys that you was not going to do this. I said, yo, remove me, man. Yeah. Good luck with the show. But don't, I don't, no, remove me and my family. Wow. So moving forward, would you, would you. I'll have, never do reality again about, unless yeah. I'm producing it. Okay. Unless it's a visionary ideas production. I will never trust any producer for reality TV. Never again. When I was driving here, me and my man BJ, and we were just reflecting on how good life is. And I just risked my life for growing up hip-hop. Yeah. Like, guys, I'm 49 years old. I don't want to beef with nobody. I'm just, I'm on a clear path. I want to work, get money, get as much money as possible, retire maybe, a couple hundred M's. I don't need to be a billionaire like over them. If I have two, three hundred, yo, I'm good. Got it, I did it. They, hey, I'm signing off. Tell my boys, y'all got it now. Y'all run it. I'm just chilling for the next, for the remaining years of my life yeah. or whatever. You know what I'm saying? That's where I'm at. Who the hell wants to be having some girl I don't know shitting on me? I don't know you. Yeah, like, you don't crazy. know me. I don't know you. I never said, a, I don't know you at all. It's the first time I'm seeing you in my life, and you're on stage disrespecting me. Does it bug you out about, you know, how social media has kind of, like, changed things now, right? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, somebody can get a clip, and it's like, oh, this it's is virus. Like you know what's yeah. funny? Because Fat Joe called me, right? So he called Joe is one of my good friends, and he's on Growing Up Hip Hop. But he was like, Gotti, I never trusted them. I swear. He said, I didn't, I didn't trust them. They just, they want that drama, right? And I was like, yeah, they, well, they got it, right? And I, with the social media, I was like, man, this thing's going to go viral. He says, going to go viral. It's viral. Yeah, like I mean, he said, yeah. <laughs> Shade Room got like a million five views. He's like, it's viral, yo. Yeah. But people love that. And that's, and that's what they wanted. Now everyone's going to want to know, yo, that was growing up hip-hop. I, I got to see that. Yeah. Uh, but at what cost? Yeah. No, I get it. For my son getting potentially punched in the face? Yeah. It wouldn't, yeah. yeah you, and, but you know what? I, we was joking in the car, and it was like, 
but look at the but look at the footage. So someone go, but yo, Gotti, has you put his family in danger? But did you see the footage? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yo, his son. And they don't care. They, they, yo, but that final footage though, right? That's we, all. Did you see the clip? That's you know what all I'm people care about. That's all that they care about. At the end of the day, with me explaining to them, do not do this thing, they made a collective collective decision to say, they said, forget that. Let's do it. Wow. Oh, Gotti. This has been one of the most, again, it goes back to like 1997. This guy is an artist within himself. He's coming out with an album. He's going to be rapping. Uh, we found out he's a poker player. Uh, what else did we find out? We found out. Yeah, man. you know I was supposed to be a rapper. No. Yes. No. Yes. Really. Give it to ja, me. Ja vetoed it. He was. He told me at the end of the day, nah. You remember when, when Ja says on the end of Thug Loving, he says, uh, Def Jam, Sony. And he says, MI2, that's what we build in a classic. I was supposed to be Ja's artist. And Tommy Mottola was going to give him a label deal. He was going to call it MI2 yeah. slash Sony. And I was going to be his first artist. Wow. This is a lot. You know what? Here's, I got one more question. One more question because I know we got to go. This is a cra Okay, we got to put all of this on go, YouTube. Go. I don't even know. Yeah, I know. YouTube. Hey. <laughs> go viral. But, oh, who cares? <laughs> I hate that word, right? People don't understand like somebody like you, right? They say, man... Irv Gotti, you know, he's disappeared, um, the feds, all this different stuff. What's your most successful song? Meaning, like, you made so much money off of this one song. Well, what I'm was real. It? I'm real. It's probably a, a big... How much money did that step? I don't know. It's, it's, it's a lot. It was number one in, like, all over the world. I'm real with J-Lo. Yeah. I'm real was, like, our biggest, biggest record. Really? Yeah. It was huge. Foolish was huge, too. Foolish okay. with Shoes was number one for like 11 weeks. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm real. But okay. I will say this. My my biggest accomplishment is Rule 336. That was the 1998? Job second album. Second album? Was it, what, what year was that? 2000? 2000. 2000. Second okay. album. And I say that to say... What was the single off of that? The single Between me and you, put it on me uh, and I cried. My goodness. Okay. The murdering sound okay. was developed on that album. And it's the biggest accomplishment because I helped the career of these other two little artists called Jay-Z and DMX. So here it is. I helped Jay and Rockefeller. I helped X and Rough Riders. And they're, in essence, in my way. You're, you're never going to be cooler than Jay. You can forget that. He's the coolest, slickest rapper. Yeah. You're never going to be more street than X. This is Ja. So... With 336, I call it my biggest accomplishment because we had to figure a way. That's why, if you remember, that's when Ja had the braids and he, he grew his hair out because that's not X. X is a bald head. So that's why he did that. Then every little thing that we do, doom, 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 should be between me and you. They're not making those records. X ain't making that. And neither is Jay. Put it on me. Where would I be without you? Or Ode to Women. Neither one of them is making that record. It sells six million. So it was like, at the end of the day, when I reflect, that was the most important and biggest album of my life. Because we had to carve our own niche. And we did it. To this day, that's the murdering sound. Yeah. It's Rule 336. Wow. Do you, uh, how's the relationship with, with Jay-Z now? It's great. Me and Jay is brothers. We had our rough patch when I... Tried to sign Nas, rightfully so. We got past it. And it's it's weird because it's an understanding. He knows I'm a bit crazy and ambitious and passionate. And I know who Jay is. You know what I'm saying? And it's a respect and a love that we have. It's really, a, it's, we're in a great place. We're gotcha. in a great place. You know, he hit me He hit me the other day just saying, like, yo, you're killing it because he's watching Tales. And he's like, yo, this, it's off the hook. And he's just, like, letting me know, yo, you're killing it. You keep going, keep going. He doesn't like when I talk about gangster stuff much. He'd be like, don't even talk about that no more. You mm. know what I'm saying? But I'd be like, oh, they ask me questions, I answer them. Yeah. I'm not as, I'm not as good as you at evading you know, you could do an interview with Ho for an hour and learn nothing. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> and that's by design. Yeah. He's he's a master at that. 
know what I'm saying? He's the master. Yeah. I seen him with David Letterman. He was doing it with David Letterman. Oh my God. David Letterman was asking him shit, and he would throw dude, it back at David. Dude. Like, so what do you think? Like, he ain't giving you nothing, yo. Jay-Z did the Letterman interview on Netflix. Uh, my, my next guest needs no introduction. And right. I was like, and I saw, and I, you know, I watched this. Like, I studied this. You this better. Is, you multimedia, right? yo. And... Dave's trying to get there. He trying to get there. Yeah, get and Jay's there. like, nah, yeah, nah, yeah. And that's nah, David nah, nah. Letterman. You would yeah. think, God, I'm gonna open up with Dave. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah, that's whole, man. Yeah. So I'm not, I'll be telling him, I'm like, yo, I'm nowhere near as savvy as you, yo. I'm on my sleeve. I sh- my shit is on my sleeve. Yeah. I'm like, you know. Who um because you you mastermind different people sound and develop different people. Uh, and maybe some of these new artists may say, Oh, that's Herb Gotti from back in the day. Have you do you look at artists now and say, Ooh, I could man, he needs to do this or I, you know, do you pull artists to the side and say, bruh? Has, well, has not, anybody I'm the old head, they ain't listening to me. Has the anybody new artists. has you ever get have you ever given anyone some of like you pulled them to the side like bro? Well like well like J. Cole uh, a good story is J. Cole early on in his career, Jay was like, Yo, speak to him, Gotti, give him that sh- thing and I was drunk. And I looked at J. Cole, and I was like, all great artists knows how to speak to the women and just broke out. And I basically told him, you can't name a great artist. They make great records for women. So with hip-hop, you may want to be the hip-hop guy or whatever, but even DMX, the rawest hip-hop. And I said, even if it's borderline disrespectful, as long as you're talking to him some way, Look at Snoop Dogg. It ain't no fun if the homies can't. That record comes on. Every woman is singing that yeah. shit, right? And then I was like, with DMA, what you just want from a nigga? As long as you're speaking to them, where they could find something that's relatable to them and talking to them. So early on, I just, just I told J Cole, just you know, learn make make for women. Can we get up for Earl Gotti, y'all? Legendary. Golly, man, oh, this crowd the crowd wow. Yeah. The Quincy Harris Morning Show with Kate Fox right here on 100.3 WR.